Hello everybody. Okay, we looked at how we can do the JSON parsing in the previous video. Now I would like to do the same JSON parsing but using the JSON library. This one, JSON library. Here it is. The JSON library, ja uh, it's JavaScript, Java library for deserializing and serializing uh, Java JavaScript. All right. Uh, or JSON object. So basically, I need to add it because it makes my life much, much easier. Basically, all what I have to do is describe uh, the uh, JSON into Java classes, into matching Java classes, and then use the JSON library to take care of that. So anyway, let's add the library first. So basically, let's see where we could do this. Now, let's add the library. Here it is. And implementation now needs brackets. So we'll add these brackets here. First one and second one, here it is, and then sync now. Okay, so we have the JSON library. Let's do get users. So where is users here? All right, users fragment. Okay, so now um, I will sh save this project first into because I want to share this with you guys. So what I'm going to do is, let's say we go back here and I just need to copy this, paste it here, and then I'll call this with JSON. No, all right, open this one, trust the project so that I can share both projects with you. All right, cool. So now this is the, uh, here is the same project. I added already the uh, library for, uh, um, I added the library for JSON, right? Okay, so basically if we go back here and check, you'll see that I added the JSON library. Now how to use it. So now if I look at how user, the user, get users, um, the response looks like, it looks like this, right? So basically there is a JSON object, it's an object, so JSON object just means a Java object. And then under it, there is a status, if you need it, you can catch it. And then there is a user's array, right? So basically, you need to, to create uh, classes to represent this. So basically, I need to create a Java class. I'll call it, for example, a user response, right? And then this user response, I know it has a string called status. Status, right? You see here, the name is status. And then there is a user's array, right? So basically, this is a array list of user and call it users right when you use this library make sure that you have an empty constructor uh, so you create an empty constructor for you here have some getters and setters all right so basically you see here i have an array list of user right and then each user looks like what looks exactly the class itself looks exactly like what the user looks like you see here the user looks like user id the name of the, of the parameters exactly the same and so what's going to happen is that it's going when it's reading it it's going to go in it will read this uh, and into the user response and then it will try to serialize whatever is coming in deserialize whatever is coming in as in in json it's trying to find its match in your java class all right so this is users we have get users and even the user objects are uh, described the same way as their uh, json right okay cool so now we'll go back to our code our code was doing all this interesting stuff here make sure that the user object also has an empty constructor it does have an empty constructor in other cases also i would recommend declaring these as public you know but depending on the version of java that you are using but i would declare these as public let's see if it works without declaring them as public but i would recommend declaring them as public but anyhow so meaning i could uh, what i would like you to do is to do this public and then similarly public right now uh, anyway so i need these to be public and also in the user i need them all to be public so i'm just going to do this okay I don't want to write public so many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all on one line. All right, here we are. And similarly here and similarly here. But anyway, just keep in mind that these names should match the names here, right? And this is public, here we are, so we have that. Okay, good. So now we have this already. We have the response which describes exactly what the JSON looks like, right? 
Now in the user fragment, in order to use it, I'm not going to do all of this stuff. You know, we, we'll come back to it. So, but I already have. We are here. I don't even. I, yeah. Do I need the body? We'll see now. Okay. So I do JSON. You see here, JSON equal new JSON. Here it is. And then basically, I wanted to send me to to retrieve for me a user response. You know, a user response. I call it a user response equals json dot get or from okay from a string you see here the string is the body and I send give it the class that respond that I would like it to to cast to so basically it takes the JSON that's coming in and it transforms it into a user response in order for this to work they have to have a one one to one mapping meaning that it can find the string that's called status has a users which is an array and then it goes in and it goes takes this one and change it into a user object and so on right so we have that so we have this now what i could do is mm, all of this code that i have i can now do this i do m users dot add all user response dot get users right so i'm just adding all the users that i received and then I'll tell the adapter that the data this has changed. Here it is. And here is my code. Right, so this is the code. And if we run this, let's see. Okay. All right. So here we are. With JSON, right? So here it is. And here it is. I'm able to get the users, right? Okay. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll put a breakpoint here, run it in debug mode. Okay, and then when the debugger shows up, I'll show you. You see here, this is the user response. It says the status is okay. And then it has a user's array, array list. And these are, this is the, uh, the first user, and then the second user, and the third user. You see here, it, it, it matches one-to-one. -one. The names match one-to-one -one from the uh, JSON. And that's why it works, right? You have to be a little bit careful if you use this library because you have to create these responses, response classes, right? These user response class in order to cultivate or uh, receive the data and getting uh, and using this library to, in order to receive the data. Okay, good. So now we're done with this. We are able to do it with users. Where else can I do this? I can do it also when you do, let's say, get mood, same story. So now when you do get mood, mood, so for example, the moods, click on send. Here is the mood. I can do the same thing. I can right click here, create a new Java class. I'll call it, for example, moods, re moods response. All right. And then the moods response, I have a string status. So I have the status one. And then similarly, I have moods, right? So which is an array list of moods. So basically I have, let's say, public public uh, mo uh, an array list array list list of mood call it moods yani okay here you are and then i need an empty constructor Where is that and i can then create a getter and setter for each one of them and we're good so here it is yes moods array list of moods and notice that the mood looks exactly the same it has id name and image url let's make them all public this public thing might not be needed but it's some historic reason we had to do public so i'm con being consistent here with what i used to do but anyhow so here we do the same thing we're not going to do all of that stuff we go here we say uh json json equal new json all right here it is and then moods response moods response equal json dot get dot from and then we pass it the body the response dot class we don't need all of the strike catch stuff we're gonna do this here and then we'll do m moods dot add all mood response dot get moods here it is and then basically we'll just notify the adapter all right here we are and 
mode. Here we are. So basically, even the mode class, we don't need this constructor. We don't need. We're not going to use it. Similarly, the users, we never used it because we're now using GJSON library. All right. So we're done with this. Now, if we run it, you will be able to see that we're able to display the modes. Mm -hmm. Add. Click the feeling. Here are the modes. Okay. Same story, we can do the same exact thing with uh, with edge groups, just to give you an idea that we're also able to do it with the JSON library. The parsing is a little bit easier, but you have to understand how to set up your classes. You know, when you create when you create these classes, the names have to match, right? All right, please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.